Greetings, dear viewer. Thank you for joining us once again to the Women Engage. And it's yet another episode, and we're glad to have you back on stage with us. Um, today, I have a very amazing guest, and you can see our set looks a little bit different today. We have some stuff. Some of them might make you nostalgic, especially those who read Uncle Arthur. <laughs> and we are here with someone who's going to tell us a little bit about them and also the goodies that are here. So we're going to explain that in a moment. I'm your host, Efi Joanna Tieno, and I would like to take this time to welcome my guest today. I'll just allow her to introduce herself. Thank you, Effie. My name is Rosemary Kendi Imadi. Mm -hmm. I'm a literature evangelist by calling, but by training, I'm a health educator. Mm -hmm. So I call myself a health evangelist. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I'm with purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, thank, you. Health thank you for evangelist. having me today. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on set with us today. Yes, thank you so yes. much for coming. Um, so we'll just go straight. Uh, into the conversation today mm -hmm. and I think in a bit I'll give you a minute to explain to our audience what this is okay. but you can just tell us uh, you are a woman in sales right and a Christian woman yes. and sales is known to be number one very aggressive I know. because the field is saturated mm -hmm. every field and you have to make space for yourself you have to be known you have to be heard your presence has to be felt so how then do you merge that requirement sort of with your Christian side which requires you to be of service to be humble to be soft and more demure so how do you balance the two aspects thank you for that question and I think it's um, it's a good question mm -hmm. because um, even as we meet with other Christian salespersons there's friction in the market mm -hmm. because they like of course the world is populated you can see almost overpopulated everyone wants a space mm -hmm. So I would say this, that Christianity is a lifestyle, yeah? You must, you, you can't just um, like put it on and put it off. Mm -hmm. But that means then you have to walk with the Lord daily. So I must admit every day, I have to wake up very early in the morning and the first thing I look at is my Bible. Mm -hmm. Actually beside my bed, of course sometimes I have go, I, I have a, an altar place where I go, but I make sure when I wake up, before getting into anything else, I must read my Bible, I read a chapter every day, I read also a commentary or something, and then a, a daily devotional. Mm -hmm. So when I start my day with God, I have a thought that I meditate on every day. And like you know, the Bible rebukes, mm -hmm. it corrects, it teaches. So even when I get out into the field and I, I get into a situation that looks like it's tempting or something, the Holy Spirit will remind me. Mm -hmm. So there are times you feel also pressed. You feel like you want to, and the Holy Spirit will tell you that's not. And if you make a mistake, there's always a fallback. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you make a mistake, there's always a fallback. <laughs> yes. But it's, it's good um, to actually set it clearly that this is how you start your day. That's how I start my day. Because if you don't start it that way, then and And, and let me wrong. confess this. Mm -hmm. Any day that I'm in a hurry, I, I look like I shorten it or like what yeah. or something. That day never works out well. Mm -hmm. That I have an experience. So even when I feel like I'm getting late, still I'm like, God, help me to still trust in you. Mm. To put you first, to have quality time with you. Actually, let me say, having quality time Thank with God. God. Mm -hmm. Every day before you get out, he prepares the way. Amen. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And uh, this leads me to the next question. Yes. Of course, there are some principles that guide you yes. in your in your work. Mm. There are some principles that are important, such as integrity, such as honesty. How then do you ensure you maintain all that? Even like you've said, when you have friction, everyone is looking for space in the market. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure you maintain that amidst all the chaos and all the friction that happens in the market? Yes. Let me say this. The Lord helped me to I have a I'm a routine person. Mm. And one of the routines that I have is that beginning of every year I ask the Lord to give me the vision for the year. Mm -hmm. So I have a vision, I have a mission, I have a theme, I have a tagline, I have a text that guides me, mm -hmm. and then I have my principles for working, the values. You know the way every organization has real values? Mm -hmm. For my mission, I have personal values, and the, I, the, the acronym is FIELD. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the way I go to the field yeah. every day. So faithfulness, mm -hmm. integrity, mm -hmm. enthusiasm, mm -hmm. love and diligence. Amen. Those okay. are my values. Okay. So what happens is because it's like I have um, guarded myself. 
So I have the vision. Like the vision for this year, the Lord told me this is the year of increase. Mm -hmm. So I know he's expanding me. Mm -hmm. But then my mission statement, for my personal mission statement, it is, um, it, it is um, uh, let me put it like this, it is a professional practice, a comprehensive professional practice uh, to teach in teaching, preaching, and healing. Because mm -hmm. like I told you, I'm a health, yeah? yeah? For in Christ and for Christ, for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So that personal, uh, personal mission guides me so that whenever there's a temptation, remember I'm guarded, I have a, a, a fence. Mm -hmm. the, my values, my mission, mm -hmm. my vision, my everything, then they keep me intact. Then something else, uh, something that makes you remain what well, helps me to remain uh, with integrity is this. I have a clear vision. Not only the yearly vision, I have a clear vision of where I want to go mm -hmm. with the mission. And I have the objectives. And also, I have values to guide now the, the industry that I've started, like the mission that I have. Mm -hmm. So, because I have that vision, and I know I want to get there, I know if I compromise, I will not get to the end. Mm -hmm. So, I have to be disciplined. Then something else I would say, through practice, I've realized that integrity, it's not an end in itself. It's actually a means mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. in business. Because once you practice integrity, what happens is that the clientele will trust in you. Mm -hmm. They will know that you don't want to take advantage of them, but you mean the, the best. So what happens? They become repeat customers. Mm -hmm. So they become almost permanent mm -hmm. clients. Then the good news is when they love your service and your product, referrals yeah and i'll tell you for sure i drive in the referrals mm -hmm. so <laughs> because of that um, i know that my customers and clients are satisfied mm -hmm. because what i this is a promise i made my, to myself eh? i will not become a problem to people i'll become a solution mm -hmm. i'll not become a liability i'll be an asset to mm -hmm. them i don't want to be a curse i want to be a blessing and therefore because of myself being principled and relying on God, I'm able to maintain within the, the field that the Lord has helped me to create around myself. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Rosemary. And it's very inspiring to actually see that there are people who do not wear Christianity as a badge or wear it as, a, as an outfit, where yeah. once you're in your office or in your professional life, it just goes out the I window. Know, know. And then you're now this professional, this sales there is a way you can actually blend both. And it's very important for our audience, uh, those who are looking at you and, and are like, I'm also in sales, different areas of sales, yes, tourism, yes, yes, different yes, yes. areas of marketing, and they feel like they have to be aggressive. They just have to be a bit worldly, for lack of a better word, for them to thrive out there. It's actually possible to do both at the same time. And God is faithful enough to offer guidance is, for all of is, this. Is, yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, now, there's just a question that has been ringing in my mind. Um, someone out there might be watching and is like, okay, so what should I put into consideration when I'm setting up my business mm -hmm. as a Christian, number one, and also just as a business person or a sales expert? What are my number one considerations, either ethical, moral, or even financial? Mm -hmm. What should they be considering first as they're setting up their business, especially something like this. And then after this, you let us know what's, what you have here, and then you can just talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. The number one question is, I would also ask, why are you getting into that kind of business? What drives you? What, what is the, 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 the main thing? Because mm -hmm. there's so many products, there are so many services. Why that particular service? Why are you doing it? For me, it is mission. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I do, I, I say that I do mission business. Yeah. It is mission. Because the Lord called me. Maybe allow me to give you a short story of myself, mm -hmm. how I got into this. Yeah. Um, when I was in high school, one of the December holidays, we went for a youth congress. I think it was the first congress within the central Kenya field of the Seventh-day Adventist in Kenya. And then there was a publishing director. I didn't even know who a publishing director was. Mm. It's late I came to realize who preached. I can't even remember the person. I tried to guess who it was, uh, the person who was in. They preached about publishing and the work that it does in the church. And then he made an outer call. And let me give you a warning. Mm -hmm. Never take an outer call if you do. <laughs> you're not willing to follow it up. He, he, he made an outer call. Mm -hmm. 
So Effie, in my teenage Christian mind, I went forward because I knew I was going to be a very successful career woman, by the way, a very ambitious girl. So I knew I would have money mm -hmm. and means to support ministry. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I was not giving myself forward for a full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. I was giving myself forward for part-time and support because he said, I remember, you can be full-time, you can be part-time, or you can use your means. Mm -hmm. So me, I settled for the third. Yeah. <laughs> Using your means. <laughs> Using my means because I was ambitious. In fact, I wanted to be in the health sector. Mm -hmm. And I was in high school that time. Before, a science student, mathematics, chemistry, you know, mm -hmm. I knew that's where I was headed. Then coming out, I think when I give myself, I always say God behaves like Morabu and Gamia. Have you ever heard of that story? No. Where, where there is the, the, the Arab and the, uh, the camel. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a story of itself how the camel ended up getting into the tent and bring it down. When you give yourself to God, he doesn't want just a part. He wants the whole. All of you. Mm -hmm. So fast forward. I get my qualifications and I start looking for jobs and I get good jobs. And I must admit the Lord is faithful. He gave me a good brain <laughs> and, and, you know, so I started getting jobs. Mm -hmm. But do you know what the Lord does? Mm -hmm. He slams all the doors with mm -hmm. the Sabbath. So every job I get, mm -hmm. Sabbath Walk issue. Sabbath. Yeah. Every job I get, Sabbath issue. Even the one I worked for one year, my salary used to be deducted for every Saturday. After one year, they said, no, it's either you work or you go. You choose the Sabbath or work. So I chose the Sabbath. So finally, to, to cut the long story short, how I became now into the full sales, Christian salesmanship, I get this interview. Mm -hmm. I call it the, is it the king or the queen interview? Mm -hmm. And um, I go to a place where it's a group of companies. They had sat in their uh, whatever executive committee and they decided to look for a woman. Mm -hmm. A young girl who was promising mm -hmm. to develop this woman finally to become the group financial controller because I had done fi uh, accounting. Oh, yes, that was the basic first. Okay. And I go, I do the interview, and I pass. And they tell me, "You are the woman we've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Young, brilliant, promising. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to groom you." Mm -hmm. We'll take you even to UK for studies. So you become ours permanent. The Sabbath comes in. But of course. Oh. And I tell them, and you know what they are? They are kind to me and they tell me, we give you two weeks. Go think about it and decide. So I go for two weeks. Of course, I know I'll not change my mind. So the two weeks, what am I doing? I'm pleading right. with mm -hmm. the Lord mm -hmm. to change their minds mind, yeah. so that they can accept me with my Sabbath. I go back, I was insulted. I was thrown out like, you look like you're intelligent. So you are not, you know? So when I was leaving the gate, wow. I remember, and this is very important, I remember one of the guards, security guards asking me, now that you have refused this job, what will you do? I had never thought about it, but it just came forth. I will do literature evangelism. And I felt empty, I saw darkness. Because I did, it's not me who spoke. I'm sure it's God who spoke mm -hmm. through me. And that's how I started this. That's how I became a full-time literature evangelist. Just like that. It's okay. a story. Okay, <laughs> I, I think she, you, you should have been here for the episode of receiving callings and <laughs> listening when God calls. Yes, yes. Wow, that's actually very fascinating because yes. then it's like, you are looking for this career yeah. uh, sort of um, area in your life, but then God was just directing you to something else. I had else. never thought of becoming a salesperson. Yeah. Never, never. Sometimes rejection is redirection. Yes, so yes, they say, yes, yes. and here we are doing yes. amazing stuff. Mm. I think I've, I've seen you with your books and your health um, stuff, even in church and outside there. So tell us a little bit about that, how it's going and what we have here so that our audience is not just watching yeah, and yeah, wondering yeah, what's yeah. happening today. So after joining literature evangelism mm -hmm. for many years and talking to people and listening to people, I realized again that my passion of health had not died. Mm -hmm. It was still there. It's like a seed that had become dormant for some years. Mm -hmm. But then 
it was revived. But I remember the year that I gave myself fully to literature evangelism, I think the Lord just assured me and told me in future, I'll do a factory food, health foods mm -hmm. factory. That's what came into my mind. And I actually wrote it down in a diary. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it just lingered. I would do a little health, like soya product. I would sell, you know, in small, many ways. But I never got into it. Mm -hmm. But come 2016, the Lord used another crisis. I got into a crisis that was a little bit depressive within the system, the church system. Brethren can also be hard on people. Mm -hmm. So getting into that for two weeks, I was down emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I started questioning God. You called me, you directed me into this to come and frustrate me. Mm. Is that your calling? You know, you know, talking and crying and whatever. And then I would say, the Lord spoke to me in a voice that I had. He directed me what to do. And I moved forward. I went for, there was, there was a gospel campaign that was there for two weeks. So I think it was, a, God was giving me a moment of healing. And then I started doing some health sales, you know, mm -hmm. selling some health products. I had my soya products, I had charcoal. Mm. Then I, another friend came and gave me chia seeds. Another one came and gave me peanut. So I'm, I'm not passing time to get healed mm -hmm. and to listen to God for those two weeks. Yeah. And guess what? After those two weeks, the ministry was born. The one that God had given me long time ago, mm -hmm. almost 20 years back by then, that's when the Lord now directed. But all the time I was saying, when I get money, I will do this. When I yeah. get money, I will do this. But God used a crisis, a depressive crisis, to push me to start small mm -hmm. and to start simple. So 2019, I registered the ministry, the Garden of Shefa Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Shefa is actually a Hebrew word for abundance. Mm -hmm. So it's the Garden of Abundance Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And doing literature evangelism and health education, I use books and products as tools of mm -hmm. evangelism. I also give health talks yeah. and teach and also coach people. Like for example, if someone has a lifestyle disease, mm -hmm. like let's say arthritis, I will advise them the food that they need to take. Mm -hmm. They are like natural supplements. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a regiment for them, maybe sometimes some uh, smoothies or something I write for them, I give them the foods to eat. And I thank God, the results mm -hmm. are always positive and that gives me satisfaction and I see myself growing. So this is really beautiful work. So how is it going so far for you? I would say, like I told you, the Lord gave me the vision for this year. Mm -hmm. It's the year of increase. Yeah. <laughs> and I have an outlet in Rungai. Mm -hmm. It was one door. Now this year being the year of increase, I've increased oh. the second door. <laughs> so we are not only selling the supplements and mm -hmm. the literature because the first door is the literature, the supplements and the Bibles and all that Christian mm -hmm. literature. But the second one now we are doing practical. We are actually doing herbal teas, oh, okay. healthy foods. We will get into healthy smoothies now to do practical. And my, my, um, I'm impressed this year to do and I, to start hydrotherapy seminars, mm -hmm. outdoor hydrotherapy seminars. So we are going to be doing hydrotherapy on people. Mm -hmm. You know, you've ever heard of hydrotherapy, the yes. Russian steam, yes. whatever, mm -hmm. the cold and what mm -hmm. contrast buds mm -hmm. and all that and the wet wraps, yeah. we'll, we start doing that this year. Okay. So we are increasing, we are growing, and we hope to meet many people. And uh, I would say this, it's, it's a very effective tool of evangelism mm -hmm. because the body, mm -hmm. uh, being the, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, let me say this, people love tangible things. They want to touch something. Mm -hmm. So if let's say someone, like for example, let me give an example of what has happened in the recent past. There's one lady who had, um, um, uh, reproductive issues. You know, mm -hmm. women have a lot of reproductive yeah. issues. Eh? So she was in pain, in pain. And so she comes and I give her one simple um, product, activated charcoal. Mm -hmm. So I give her instructions. Mm -hmm. I tell her how to take the charcoal. Mm -hmm. And I think she was in so much pain, she decides she's not going to take the way I said. So I told her to take once in a day, three days in a week, to skip seven days and take the next one one. She decided to take two tablespoons every day. <laughs> God is faithful though. <laughs> and do you know what happens? Mm -hmm. After five or four days, she started issue, getting issues, you know, because her she was gaping like like fibroids or something. Mm. And I think she took so much charcoal that went and started cutting those fibroids. Oh. 
And she bled and bled and she came and I told her, no, stop now taking. She said, but I think it's helping me. I'm feeling better. I said, no, but you have to stop. Last week, she went to the doctor to be checked. The fibroids are gone. Okay. She told me. Uh -huh. I, I didn't see them. Mm. But now I asked her, are you sure? She said, I could not even touch my belly. It was mm -hmm. tough. And it's true, I could see her belly was big. Now oh, it's yeah. going down. I can see it with my eyes, but I don't know what is inside. Mm -hmm. And she tells me it used to be so painful. Even her husband could not touch. Now she can even, you know, punch it. Mm. As much as she did something that I didn't tell her to do, but I'm also shocked. You know, some things happened, they shocked me also. Because I didn't know that Chaco can actually do the fibroids. Yeah. I didn't know. Okay, I knew they do it, but I didn't know they would act that pretty that, fast. Mm. And I think it's like, she kind of like took more than I had told her to take. Mm. So when I get such feedback, it always teaches me, but also motivates me to serve more. Mm -hmm. And it, it helps me to know that I'm fulfilling the purpose that God called yeah. me for. So it gives me satisfaction. And let me say this, it's not so much about the money. Mm -hmm. Although the money is needed mm -hmm. to live and to grow, mm -hmm. but the impact of the ministry mm -hmm. is what keeps me smiling and going every day. Oh, amen. <laughs> it's actually beautiful to yes. see people make a living from their calling and <laughs> live their calling and fully live the purpose that God yes, has intended yes, for yes, them. Yes. Now, seeing as time is far much spent and yes. being in sales, yes. it would be very unfair of me to yes. let you go out here yes. without telling people where to find you, what sort of products they can find when yes, they come yes, to you, yes. and basically how to be able to reach you. So I'll give you a chance to give us a parting shot. And in your parting shot, you can encourage someone who's watching you today and feels um, maybe they want to go into literature evangelism, maybe mm. they want to go into mm -hmm. health ministry. You know, for me, these are things I learned a lot when I used to go for mission, back mm. when I had energy in campus. <laughs> and then it just died out. But when I had a, my mom sick at home, mm. I think I actually learned how to use most of these things now effectively. Those mm. days it was just because, okay, we are going for mission, we must have them. But sometimes in that moment of crisis, then you'll be pushed to actually learn how yeah. to use activated yeah. charcoal, how to make hibiscus tea and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just um, talk to someone out there and tell us how to be able to reach you, uh, where they can find you, if they need to contact you, and what sort of amazing books and products they can find when they visit you. Yes, let me say this. Uh, maybe I don't know, looking at the camera, yes. but um, one of uh, the books that I supply is for Home Health Education Service, mm -hmm. which is an auxiliary department of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Yeah. Uh, so we have books on uh, character building, like you can say we have the Bible story, which is a favorite, mm -hmm. Uncle Ada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I go for displays, when people see yeah. it, they, they get so excited. Mm -hmm. Oh, Uncle Ada, Uncle Ada. But one of my favorites is the story time in Africa, mm -hmm. the one you see in red. Allow me to say short about the story. It, yes, it's a collection, yes. it's a true it's a collection of true stories mm -hmm. of children, I think around 70 years back, mm -hmm. from around East and Central Africa, Zambia, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, and all that. And they were actually written by a missionary, oh. Caroline, mm -hmm. who currently is retired. She lives in California, in mm -hmm. America, around 94 years. Mm -hmm. But amazing is she gave her life for ministry. Mm -hmm. She never got married. She never got a child. But this set of books has inspired so many children and has helped so many children to have their characters shaped. Mm. And I would encourage every home to have this set, mm. even for the young ones, as you learn to have yeah. a family, because character is the only investment that is eternal. Mm -hmm. All these other investments we have here on earth are temporal, but this book will help the child to, to, to develop values like diligence, Self, I mean, self-esteem, mm. belief in God, hard work, you know, those are the values that are in this. I mean, the, every story has a value that it instills. Mm -hmm. And above all, every story has a Bible verse mm -hmm. that gives it the strength. Now, for my products, uh, I, I have an outlet called the Garden of Shepherd Lifestyle mm -hmm. at Rungai, Kajiado, Kenya, at a mm -hmm. place uh, called Rubies. Mm -hmm. the, the, the structure is called Race Asa Annex. We're mm -hmm. in room six and seven, like I said, we started with room six, now we're in room seven, mm -hmm. where we are doing the practical. Mm -hmm. And when you come there, we, we, we have all the, the powders, the nuts, the seeds, mm -hmm. that I know healthy nutritional supplements, and we help people. We don't just sell. Mm -hmm. Tell us your condition. Do you want to lose weight? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. We'll show you the products that you're going to use, how you're going to use them, mm -hmm. and we will work with you. Yeah. If we need to change something or to add something, we'll do them. Our nutritional counseling is free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we guide people because we are missionaries at mm -hmm. heart. At yeah, day. though we are doing mission business. And yeah, just come and visit us. And whoever would come, um, we haven't created a website. We hope to do it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can give my number. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, in Kenyan, it's plus two, five, four. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Kenyan was then 720-31-8069. Okay. And then we have the number for the shop that mm -hmm. direct. That is plus um, 254-777-318068. Okay. Yeah, the Garden of Sheffer. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think the production team can, can do something with the number so that they run down <laughs> yeah, there yeah, yeah, and yes. people can be able to reach you. Yes. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for so having much, me too. This was a very insightful conversation and maybe I should have never abandoned health mission <laughs> work. <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you so much. And I hope someone has got some help. I hope so. Yes, and inspired to do I hope so. mission. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much, our audience, for joining us once again. And just like you've heard, you can actually earn a living from your calling. And one thing I've discovered from all the stories that we've been sharing throughout this season is when God calls you to something, he mm. provides the means Thank to you. do that. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, he provides the sustenance. Yes. God does not let his people go into mission work without providing a way for you to survive because most mission work honestly it's free people yeah. do it out of the willingness mm -hmm. because it's a call mm -hmm. but then god just provides a way you're not going to die hungry there is no day you'll sleep hungry because at, at the end of the day god provides so thank you so much for joining us be sure to check out to check out garden of shefa that is garden of abundance yes. i really love that i really <laughs> love that <laughs> Uh, and also, you. please, for those of us who read Uncle Arthur, we know the goodness that's in these books. Yeah. Get yourself some Uncle Arthur. Mm. I see health healthy stuff. juices down some, there. Yeah, I know. Yes, it has amazing recipes, amazing recipes. And actually all use. the products we have, they're in the healthy recipes. Healthy can you imagine yes. it's like a one-stop shop yes. so be sure to check them out thank you so much for watching today thank you so much for spending time with us for our recurring um, audiences and those who are visiting us for the first time welcome and stay with us as we learn about things that affect modern women and we do that at the feet of jesus i'm your host Effie Joanna Tieno. be sure to check us out on all social media platforms that is hope media network ecd and also hope channel where you can find all the episodes at the comfort of your home thank you once again that's all from us bye